Is it easy for anyone in the force serving to come up and testify on matters like this? If you we, say, time we, for us to open up. Or we can. will come to that. We will come to that because let me tell you something about the force we have on ground as far back as the last 15 years is very much different from the force in which I served. The Nigerian army is not divorced from the social, cultural and environmental factors within which we thrive as people. Today's armies or today's Nigerian army is where you could actually see a soldier who goes to battle and having done his beat, when he's doing his R&R, &R, his rest and recuperation, he picks up his simulator and his game and he's playing on his phone. And he's even communicating with friends across the whole of the world. They are more liberated, they are more informed. You cannot hide things from them. Let me give you a simple example. The soldiers whose death sentences or life imprisonments were commuted to 10 years are still not going to feel any good about it. Why? Because what we're hearing from the quarters of the NSA simply has vindicated them. It has vindicated them. I would have expected a situation or a scenario where we just go ahead and give this generous amnesty we've been offering militants and they've been refusing, amnesties we've been offering terrorists and they've been refusing, then give your soldiers amnesty based on the inconsistencies involved, then read them a riot act. If you dare do this going forward, I'm sorry. There are ways soldiers can complain without having to point guns at commanders. Do you, do you think that it could affect the morale? Because you say the morale of the troops are still high. Absolutely. You're morale. sure of that because we also understand their salaries have been late. That, yes, indeed. But you see, when you get morale up to a set, a morale, is, morale is like a balloon. A pin can deflate it. Okay? I would expect something to, 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 to just wipe that slate clean. You see, you, when you go on to equity, you come with clean hands. And now you are seeing the authority that is actually, you know, adjudicating, having facts or having cause to believe that the man who should have been at the top of it all, the oracle himself, didn't quite get it right. But some of them still tell us today, uh, apart from the allowances being very paltry, um, that look, they haven't seen or received any fresh arms to prosecute this war and that what they see out there is air-to-air -air fighter jets and not air-to-ground fighter jets. So when yes. you hear those kind of things, you just wonder. Yes, when it comes to arms, when it comes to arms, arms cannot just be conferred on this military we see overnight. It takes time. If you had to buy even new arms for soldiers, you have to think about training. And don't forget, we have to do the training probably hands-on because we're not going to take a break and leave the Northeast and go train them and bring them back. It's going to be a slow, painful process. Why I say it's going to be a slow, painful process is because it took us time to get to this sorry state we're in. And the only way we can make it less painful is by being truthful, sincere, and transparent. People are going to come out with all kinds of reasons why this man is being tried, is being witch hunted, his fundamental human rights have been violated. But I tend to also think about fundamental human wrongs. Yes, we don't talk about fundamental human wrongs, but we perpetrate them every day. That's not why the courts are there for them to go face the music. Exactly. So basically, this thing about corruption, this thing about the Northeast, they're all intertwined. There's one aspect, too, that I like to bring up as we talk about taking territories and possibly it remaining so. In this fight against corruption, other security agencies, other arms, take a look at the police, for instance, and they keep talking about the fact that we also need to ensure that they, because they've got this capacity in terms of reach and, and numbers, to also maintain or contribute their quota to this. But you see, every time you hit the streets, it's the same kind of way they've been acting before this insurgency came up. That's still the same way they go about. You don't get to see Wait a minute, the mindset is different now. We'll face something. Then one asks, are they also being integrated in this fight? From what I'm seeing, if there is any form of integration, it's slow. You see, I tell you something about policing. Policing is versatile. And because it's versatile, we have to raise the bar on our police force. If we don't raise the bar on our police force, we won't force them to grow. We must raise the bar and force them to occupy that space, having raised it. The average policeman out there must be smarter, wiser, and more informed than the average criminal out there. 
You see, there's a book I read about David and Goliath, sorry. It's written by Malcolm Gladwell. And Gladwell simply said something like, Goliath was too big to be missed, and David was too small to be aimed. Now our police is so big, it's virtually collapsing under its own weight. And that counts when you come to fighting crime. You could actually be very heavy in the head and lean in the waist. What we need to see is a lean, mean police force. And a lean, mean police force can only be supported when it goes virtual. 170 million people can never, believe me when I say believe me, never be policed manually. It's not possible anywhere. We must go virtual. Where I'm, do we start? I'm looking forward. My heart song is for the police to have a cyber command anytime soon. Starting point. You have to have the manpower. Manpower for a cyber command does not require 300,000 men. So as we wrap up now, what would you say we're in this fight against corruption? Do you agree with the government that we're, we've largely won territories or we've largely won the war? When it comes to the fight against insurgents, they have been successfully routed. When it comes to fighting terrorism, we have much, much more to do. What about the one or two local governments left, according to the Minister for Information? I do not know where those one or two local governments he's talking about came from. But based on what I know last count Christmas Eve, our men are warming up, our troops are looking forward to closing 31st December 2015 by returning a mission accomplished to the CNC. And then there must be a warning. If what I have logged down is correct, Boko Haram has a way of debunking anything you say. Now that we get closer to HR, they must also become virtually all around the lot. One attack, one simulated attack, one pretended mooted attack can rubbish what has been achieved. Especially if it happens one month, two months, Ten minutes months. to midnight, mm. 31st of December, then it routes the entire thing, isn't it? All right, then, Captain Ali Omar, thank you very much indeed for your time. You're welcome. Well, that's a wrap uh, here on the program today. We'll also um, appreciate your comments as well. We encourage you to just keep them coming through. We'll be back next time. I'm Chamberlain or so. Well, thank you for sending in those comments. We hope that you really keep them coming in, as he said. Thank you for watching. I'm Maupe Many thanks. I'm Suleiman. I'll let us see you again.